What's going on, guys? Welcome to the Too Much Test Podcast, episode 11. As always, I'm here with Sam Stolt and David Dimasquita. You can find Sam on Instagram at sam.stolt. You can also search for him on YouTube. You can find Dave on Instagram on dynamite underscore D and look up David Dimasquita on YouTube. And we have a special guest here today, and I'm going to let Dave introduce him. All right. So we have Justin here with us, a.k.a. Supplement Snoop. Yes, now... Sir. This is actually a funny story. So we've actually been talking for like three days now, right? And I've seen yep. him lingering around the internet for a while, by the way, you guys. Not like I didn't know who he was beforehand. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of it came from like more for Jim Ben. And that's kind of the first time that I saw him. And this was like years ago. I've been with Ben and help and really supporting his business just from like a standpoint of he has the, I don't care what anyone says. He has the best supplements in the industry, period. Best bank for buck supplements. I don't care what anyone else says. It's, that's just a fact. Um, now, to take a little step further, um, he also popped up with like rent, whenever a supplement company was involved anywhere in the world, I pretty much would see him popping up, doing a review on it or something like that. And I was like, who is this guy? Like, he's all <laughs> over the place. But it was always super scientific, good reviews and very unbiased based off of active ingredients. And if someone didn't know an active ingredient, they would ask about an active ingredient. And then he would give supplement recommendations based off of the different companies and what they combine stuff together, but, but very scientific based. And I, I was very impressed that he would dumb down complex subjects, just like what we do on here. Now, I uh, just kind of fast forward to three days ago, I put a post <laughs> up about, <laughs> I put a post up about Black Friday. And I was basically like, premium products, when is the last time you've seen a Ferrari on discount, essentially? Premium products do not get discounted. In fact, they go up in time. So there's never going to be a black sale. One thing that I always preach on is Ben never does Black Friday sales. And people mm -hmm. will always ask for a Black Friday sale from him. And he won't do it because the market, the profit margin isn't high enough to do it. So it kind of inspired me. And someone randomly reached out to me asking about like coaching if I do a discount for Black Friday. And my answer is, Hell no, that's my time. Mm -hmm. it's, not right. even, it's not even just a material product that I print and I sell, right? That might be one thing. I get it, you know. But even like Ferrari, that's a not a printout, but that's a build out. And they don't discount their set cars or anything like that. So needless to say, I was like, I gave some business advice. And at the end of it, I was like, now you don't need to hire a business coach for 10K a month, put yeah. in the hard work. And then when you need that person, they will be there for you. But make sure that you're putting the, the grunt work. And that's the fundamental pieces to a business is you can't do the grunt work. The business is going to fail. That's like uh, not being able to mop the floor of your restaurant, owning the floor of the re and owning the restaurant. You know, you should be able to put in the work. Um, so someone commented on it and tagged him in it. So, and basically like, yeah, people like him don't need to be hired, blah, blah, blah. And it was basically a troll comment and it was negative. Everyone was super positive on it besides a troll comment. And I'm like, Wait, I was like, he does business coaching? So I didn't even know that he did business coaching for supplement companies because I just knew him from re supplement reviews. Yeah. And I hit him up. I'm like, hey, man, like, like <laughs> I, I really appreciate what you do for the industry. Like, it was just a high compliment. Him. I'm like, if, <laughs> if you want, I can remove the comment. I don't really care because everyone's very positive on my page. It's basically positive energy breeds positive outcomes is mm -hmm. ultimately the end goal in life. So Justin and I started having a conversation. I was like, you know, I was like, you fit perfectly into this podcast. What do you think about jumping on it? Do you have time? And it kind of aligned with our schedule and everything like that. Yeah. And here we are. So I'll let him introduce himself. Yeah, it was Let's funny see. because the, so I wake up and I see this random comment and I'm like, so I read your, your post. And now the funniest thing about this whole thing is your post is exactly like what I've gone through. Like you start off, you do the grunt work, you learn it yourself. And then you're like, well, I don't need someone to give me a job now. I don't need this. Like I can do it myself kind of thing. And I remember you were like, well, if you want me to delete the comment, I will. I was like, actually the comment is perfect because it just highlights how like lazy people are where they're like, oh, well, you know, I'll just criticize this. It's like, and what did I say? I responded to the guy and I said, you should spend less time being obsessed with me and go out there and do something. Like do something with yourself instead of worrying about what I'm doing. But it's kind of funny how, um, things have evolved so much, like from basically like if I could like rewind the clock, like how supplements new kind of started was I was kind of telling you guys before uh, Dave jumped on, I was in like, you know, regular nine to five, like corporate style kind of learning. It's I started, didn't start off that way, but that's the direction I was kind of going, you know, married, 
forever home. I have my 401k, all that good stuff. And then I always was interested in supplements and training and stuff like that on the side, but never like super, super into it, you know, just, just normal guy. Right. And I remember like eventually, you know, it clicks in that, am I, is all the stuff like I'm taking? Is this, is this, you know, and it was like the internet when all the scare tactics are out there and you're, you're, uh, you know, artificial sweeteners are going to kill you and all this other crap, like all this stuff going on. So uh, I remember I was looking at like a whey protein tub the one day and I'm like, what the f- is this stuff? Xanthan gum and all these, like, I'm like, I have no idea what any of this stuff is. So I'm like, well, there's got to be an app, right. That tells you what, like, I can just pull up an app store and this is going to tell me everything I need to know about this stuff. And I'm looking and I'm like, and there's nothing. And so I started to look at like individual ingredients and I was like, this is really hard to like (laughs) find this stuff out. Like, this is really hard because every time I would bring up an ingredient, it would be like an ad for a company, you know, like you search, you search for something, but something SEO pops up first. So you get like the sponsored, you know, it's this supplement company. And I'm like, man, this is not what I'm looking for. Like, I want to know what this stuff actually is. And then I'm like, damn, did I just, I have no idea how to make an app. I have no idea about supplements. I was like, but I kind of feel like this has to be a thing. So then if I would know like what I know now, what I would have to do to get to that point, I don't know that I would have still done it, but I'm glad (laughs) that I did because I remember realizing like I started building this database for this app that was my big idea, right? Your million dollar idea. And I'm like, this is why there's nothing like this out there because this is a fucking nightmare. (laughs) This is an absolute, like, you have to be a sick human being to want to spend your time researching all this stuff and writing it down and learning. And I'm like, for for what? Like, just in my spare time? Like, we don't have anything else to do kind of thing. So that's how it all kind of got started. Can I ask you a question about that? Sure, man. In, in your app, like once you go through and you start doing like one or two ingredients, it might be like haphazard a little bit. But once you get to your 50th or your 150th ingredient, that you've gone through and done some type of synopsis on. Yeah. Have you come up with like a template of yeah. like pros, cons? Because uh, mm-hmm. I, I have not seen the app. I think that's a really cool idea. Um, I think people like us would find that interesting. And I think that the number of people like us who consider what we put into our body and what mm-hmm like the ingredients are and the things that we use or consume and yeah. they, that, that, that awareness is expanding, but what, how do you break down the template of like what to share, what to not share? Cause like I read through medical literature on yeah. different things yeah. and it's, there's a, just a bunch of garbage and then yeah. you have to pull out little pieces of it. So I'm curious to <laughs> know how you broke that down. Yeah, man. So uh, there actually was an original version of the app and this is kind of like there's man, like literally every cliche you've ever heard or we've ever seen on the internet. Like I've, that's been my life. Like the last couple of years, there's constantly like, um, cause like I remember hearing a saying I was in, so I was working full time and then there was some potential. I worked for General Electric, you know, it was a huge company and there was like a lot of layoffs and stuff like that. So I was going to school at night as well. It was part of like NAFTA and like all this other stuff. So I remember uh, coming up with this, this whole like plan, right? This idea and what I would do it. So at night I'm, I'm building this stuff out and exactly like what you said, I would go to like, you know, examine does a pretty good job. And like some of these places are you're reading like PubMed, but I'm like, look, I'm not, I'm not a moron, but I don't understand what any of this stuff means. So I'm like, I couldn't copy and paste a, an ingredient definition from there and put it into an app because I want to make sure my whole thing that I've always been big on with this space is too often we, we can't bridge the gap between those of us that know are in it right and we speak that language but there's like literally you know billions of people out there that don't know that they can get benefits from all this stuff they're intimidated by the space so it's like how do you how do you make it approachable for them you know what i mean so i started to realize that i actually had to learn this stuff and then figure out a way to explain it in terms that you know we we call it like the grandma approach where I would want a a grandmother to be able to pick up our app and be able to understand it. And then that's sort of where the app evolved, where 
I, you know, I don't want to have it like super long and like cumbersome and where it makes it look bad. You know, you want to be, you want to be to the point, but at the same time, a lot of this stuff has just like a thousand different, you know, uses. And this, so that's how we actually took the first version of the app into the second version of the app where we added like the private Facebook group, like Ben, he's a big part of that. He's everybody loves him there. Cause all his stuff is amazing, but it was basically like, okay, so if I tell you what Ashwagandha does, for example, then what? How does that, how does that help, you know, the, the dad out there or the mom that's trying to spend time with her kids or have more energy? And it's like, what does that mean for that person? So then that's why we wanted to take it to like another level where I compare the app as sort of like your encyclopedia, your, your college material, so to speak. And then the group is sort of like your classmates, your peers. And then we have like a group of like experts, brand owners, they all kind of get involved. So they're there to answer questions. And it's all like, well, it's turned into something that honestly, I never, I never could have imagined. It's like way beyond what, what I would have thought, but it was been an interesting process. For sure. oh, <laughs> no doubt. What's the app called? It's called Supplement Snoop. It's in the uh, app store. And people lost their shit because the original version of the app was basically just ingredient breakdowns. And we wanted to take it to like another level, but I didn't want to do ads. I don't ever, that's another thing about me is I noticed there was a lot of people in the space and I don't care how other people make their money, but I don't take a dime from any supplement companies ever. Like, I just don't want to be tied to that. I don't want to ever be in a position where I feel like I have to say something about a supplement because a company is paying me, right? Mm -hmm. So there's no incentives there. So we didn't want to run ads within the app. So it's a it's a price, it's a monthly subscription fee for this app. And a lot of people, it's like, they'll use it for a month, get a ton of information out of it. Some people have been there for years. And it's just a community where Facebook is terrible, you know, it's just, but we, we've literally never had one, like I've never had to like delete a comment. I've never, because people pay money, they put skin in the game. Like you guys know, being coaches and stuff like that, people have to put skin in the game. And if they don't, it's just kind of a waste of your time. It's like, you know, you can't use us like a Google or Alexa and like, Hey man, what's the best chest workout to build mass? And you're like, well, you know, it's a little deeper than that kind of thing. So you know, what's, what's crazy about the supplement industry is that you can put a proprietary blend and you can just list all the stuff that's in there, but you don't have to list how much is in there. I always found mm -hmm. that interesting. Yeah. Um, you know, and I, I noticed a lot of these companies, I mean, hey, the supplement game is, it's one of the dirtiest, dirtiest industries ever. I mean, you mm -hmm. know, there's people that were putting like D-ball and pre-workouts and, um, you know, yeah. someone will basically, I mean, I can just pick up a label and I can find someone to make that and I can just copy your product. Mm -hmm. um, but it's interesting that like a lot of the stuff you find at like Walmart will be like a pre-workout and it will be like L-citrulline, you know, and they, they just basically put enough in there just so they can put all those names on the label, but they're mm -hmm. not in efficacious doses. Uh, yeah. They're super underdosed. So I always found that interesting about this industry. Yeah, uh, you know, and it's it, it's tough too because that's the way we usually approach it is um, that's one reason why Ben and I became friends like so fast is because I remember somebody sent me his like Volugen label the one time and I was like, what the hell is this? Like, <laughs> why have I never seen? But in that kind of like inspired me in a lot of ways too, is because as a, as I was using supplements, I'm using what's popular on bodybuilding.com back in the day, right? You're using the ENGNs and the C4s and all that sort of stuff, but you don't, you just don't know that that kind of stuff is out there. And most people don't. And then when I can expose them, I'm not telling them like if, if someone, if they have a better experience going to the gym using C4 than they do Alphagen, then knock yourself out, man. Like, I don't care, but just know that that stuff is out there you know, know that there's other options that people like Ben who can't flood the market with ads and things like that, um, that he has a, 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 give him a fighting chance. It's like, that's the, the beauty of the world we're living in now is like I said, you ultimately can decide what you want, right? That what works for you the best, but just don't, don't go through it only being exposed to like this, what you see at Walmart and stuff like that. And sadly, you know, that's where people it's, can you get in front of their face? People don't want to take the time to dive into it. And like I said, even I didn't know that Ben's stuff was out there until somebody sent it. And I was like, holy shit. Okay. You know, this is different. 
I kind of want to talk about the knowledge piece and how you develop your business. So I'm actually rolling out a mentorship program starting in December. I'm going to announce it publicly. Like I, I just put a post up to my story, but I'm going to actually announce it publicly, kind of like what I'm offering. And if I you, think you just did. Well, <laughs> you're on Twitch. Well, yeah, I, I guess so. <laughs> this is the podcast. <laughs> so um, I, I'm rolling this platform out, right? But everyone always asks me, like, where'd you obtain your knowledge from? And I go, here's what you need to know about actually learning. You have to understand and theorize. So mm -hmm. you need to understand the fundamental. It's kind of like a tree, right? You have to have your roots found in place and then you can eventually it gets water and then the tree grows and it goes from a stump into a beautiful tree and keeps getting bigger and stronger and stronger. And it has to, that's basically knowledge, right? So I learned the endocrine system backwards. I learned pharmacology first. So about performance enhancing drugs and learn like, like I find a word and I'm like, holy, what is this word? Aromatase, right? Ar like what, what does, what does aromatizing even mean? Right. And you look it up. What does, what is um, five alpha reductase do? Like, I didn't even know it was like an enzyme that breaks down and converts it to DHT. So I learned the endocrine system, the pharmacology piece of what the drugs all did. And then once I learned the endocrine system, stereogenesis, which is the natural body's process of breaking down hormones, I was like, oh my gosh, this is so easy. I know all these terminologies and stuff like that. So learning terminologies and being able to theorize and piece puzzles together uh -huh. is what makes someone unique and actually knowledgeable in the space. And I try to explain to people, it's all self-taught. It was like PubMD and like uh -huh. you find a word that you can't understand and you're reading through studies. I read a study on Milestone and I felt actually stupid for one of my <laughs> I, yeah. I don't there's, much no university. there's no steroid yeah, university like, so you have yeah. to, there should be yeah. Yeah. but, so, but it, it's kind of crazy like if you build from the fundamental piece of a business and you actually sprout up and that's a grunt in the knowledge part is that grunt work piece in this industry in my eyes and even if i roll out a mentorship program right i'm actually not just doing coursework i want it to be based off of case studies that you're actually seeing because mm -hmm. i can tell you and i can hand you a course and be like this is how the body breaks out hormones and this is what it does and this is what you're going to see and this is the fix for it and you know what you learn nothing you learn absolutely nothing you'll you'll take some pieces away from it and you're going to regurgitate exactly what i told you to do but you're going to have no idea why or mm -hmm. fix or if something else is off oh what did david do here well what there's it's systems. It's not one system. It's not just the thyroid. It's not just the hormones. It could be the pituitary axis way. It could be your testicles. They're, like there's so many different pieces of the puzzle and you have to understand like the actual theories and the concepts and, pro and produce your own theories and concepts over time. Um, not just based off of one study or yeah. macro studies, because there are anomalies too that get thrown out from studies all the time. Sure. So um, I just thought it was cool. Yeah, no, you're hundred percent right. And that's kind of the thing that I realized was, you know, if someone can ask me like, and this is why I usually don't, I don't tell people like the stuff I take because I'm like, there's a reason why I take what I take. It's, it's through a lot of trial and error, it's through a lot of experience. Uh, it's my age, it's my lifestyle, it's all stuff. So for me to tell you, people get pissed at me all the time. Like, I, I would say like all the time, a lot of people understand like my Q and A's, like I can be like a little bit rough. And that's why like sometimes I do get like some troll comments here and there because I, I'll give people like, my thing is like, I will always answer someone's question like right off the bat if you have a genuine question because i was there too once right like a lot of people will it's like kind of a running joke because you said earlier about ben's supplements being the best one of my things is i uh i'll say like there's no best like pre-workout there's no best you know kind of this and that i was like you have to kind of figure that thing out so i kind of like those questions because that's what we're we're sort of ingrained in doing that like if i were to go i say that in my space but if i go like all right, I need a, a new lawnmower, right? I don't know anything. Like, I'll look, what the, I'll Google what's the best lawnmower. Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? And I don't want yeah. somebody to tell me like, well, you know, it depends on like what size, what color lawn you have or what kind of grass you have. Like, I don't want to hear any of that shit. So, but I'm like, this is your, I'm like, this is your health, right? I was like, so if you're ever going to take some extra time to kind of understand this stuff, it would be your health. So we kind of try to curate it for the individual person, which takes a lot of work. And just like what you're talking about, same kind of thing where we can kind of get you started, but it's not going to be this 
it's not going to be this you ask me a question and I Alexa the answer back to you or Siri the answer back to you. It's like it has to be a, a synergistic kind of relationship where um, what and then stuff changes, as you know, too. It's like, you know, you could take someone through a, a training regimen or whatever or a diet like a, a nutrition coach or, or a nutritionist or uh, meal prepping and all that stuff. That's a perfect example because anybody can Google a macro calculator. Right. And say, OK, this is. But how, how do you tweak that for exactly what you need at, you know, how your body is responding? There's all those intricacies and nuances in there. And that's where I think people take such a, you know, kind of a, you know, a broad look at the way supplements can actually help you. And that's why supplements get a bad name, too, because people use it and they don't work. And I'm like, well, you're not using it the way you're supposed to be using it also. It's like they're, they should never be the, you know, the number one thing you're looking at. But if you put them in the right position at the right time, suddenly you have something, you know, that can kind of help you. And you build, you build like what you guys are both uh, talking about. It's a into you after you build a knowledge base and that's always growing, right? You build a, at least for myself, probably similar for you guys, you build an intuition about the supplementation that you use and the timing and the appropriateness, depending on what, because this is such a big part of it too, your head, right? Like uh -huh. the stories that are going on there. So there's pieces that you might use for like sickness that you don't necessarily use on a daily basis, but you have oh, them yeah. on deck. Or if you're feeling a certain sort of way or want to create a workout in a certain sort of way or, you know, other pieces of things that you put into place, but you don't know that until you build up that intuition. And those pieces, like Justin was saying, are different for Justin than they are for me. Like mm -hmm. somebody's like, hey, what, what, what do you take? But it's like, well, these are the things that I take because these are the things that are important to me, which might be different than you. And you see that as a waste of time and money. Like mm -hmm. it's so nuanced based this, yeah. this morning I actually had an idea. So I journal every day and <clears throat> I thought it would be a awesome idea over the course of say like next 50 years or so to build out an AI that is able to capture on a much more holistic basis, the nutrition side of things, the psychological side of things, the traditional Western type of medicine and from all these different pieces. So it's, it's con it's going to constantly have to be learning, mm -hmm. but then the recommendations are not drugs. Like that's a secondary. The first mm -hmm. thing is like uh, lifestyle and whatnot changes in diet and whatnot. The second thing is supplementation. The third thing would be drugs. So the first thing is like, Get your fucking shit together from a lifestyle standpoint. And and maybe that's broken into two pieces as in, you know, things that you you do and you consume, but also like what stories are you telling yourself from from a mental thing? And then going into like the supplementation piece of things that you're not your diet's this way and you're working towards this. So let's add in this because you have these might you have these micronutrient like deficiencies or something like that. And Unfortunately, by the time you come out with your AI, and it's a really awesome idea, Big Pharma's AI is going to destroy your AI before it even sees the day of light, of light yes. of day. But I, just, I want to jump in about kind of the shady part of the industry. And yeah. I partially blame the supplement industry for needing to be on TRT. Not so much that I took enanthate and cypionate, but prior to that, um, when I was 16, I actually got my mom to order me Androstein Dion from the internet. And it was some ad just like the ads they run now to 16 year old kids. And it's like yeah. perfectly natural, muscle growth, no <laughs> suppression. Not that I knew what suppression was in the first place at that point, but mm -hmm. my mom bought me Androstein. So I was stacking Androstein, creatine, and some garbage ass GNC protein from back in the day. But that's the kind of the same thing that's going on with SARMs these days. You know, a lot of these, you know, guys like SARMs Info on Instagram, he's real with people and he puts out a lot of knowledge. But you go to a SARMs website and it's, oh, everything's great. No side yeah. effects. It's good. Just run some Rad 140, some MK and some Carterine and your, your money. So I have, uh, this, is, this is a couple of peptides. Uh, so another thing that I would like, I'm actively working on is, um, these are from a different company that I'm actually going to be testing. Hopefully this week, there's a local lab. It's like a GMP lab and I built a relationship with them. And I'm going to bring this in to get tested to see if it is what it is. And I would love to be able to have access or acquire the HPLC 
testing equipment and or have a relationship that's symbiotic with a company that already has it so that I can test when and not like don't take any like free products or any money from any companies, figure out another way to make it sustainable and test these products, not just as in SARMs or peptides, right? Because that's shit's fun, but also supplements because literally you can just say this is on the label and you can put fucking deep on it right or whatever the yeah. case is take the actual supplement bring it in there okay it, is this what it says it is cool it is what it is okay is it in the doses that are appropriate like that says you know on the label it says you know two to five grams of creatine or whatever the case might be for the ingredients and check to see if it actually is that because then you yeah. can put a bio of all the products that are tested up there and nobody's doing that not in a way to like police the industry but like if it build it out with like a, a podcast or, or youtube videos is what i was thinking mm -hmm. and not being like i'm throwing this person under the bus or this company under the bus but like hey i got this product i paid for it here's the receipt uh we tested it this is actually what's in it. It's not accurate according to the label here. And just show people that information because nobody, nobody's doing that. You know what I mean? It's super what, are, expensive. what are some of the most fucked up supplements you've seen? Um, just one example. I've got two examples. One of them was Jacked 3D from back in the day. And they had to reformulate it. And I'll let, I'll let Justin talk about that because I can't remember what was in it that was bad. But I saw on someone's Instagram, there is a company that it sells injectable. It's an injectable combination of uh, DNP, clenbuterol, and yohimbine. <laughs> I, <can't hear> <laughs> I mean, that's insane. But what, yeah. what are some other crazy stuff you guys have seen? Mm, honestly, like, we don't really, it doesn't really do us any good to, uh, because we kind of like went down that route where it was almost like, you almost end up like the supplement police, right? And there's really not, there's not much there. So I'll give you an example. Like we, um, when we first, like one of the uh, parts of the app is you go into the app and like any company that shows us third-party testing results has to be third-party, right? Nutribio is like a, a one company where they, they post it all on their own website. They send all their products out. Um, they have a third-party tested and then they post their results for each of their products online, which is, it, it's great. I mean, it's, it's, it's what you would hope that, you know, companies would do, but, you know, it's expensive and all this other stuff and you hear all these excuses. Well, we push that pretty hard and I gotta be honest with you. Nobody, nobody cared. Nobody really cares. People don't really like get to that point. Cause then also like when you do stuff like that, if there's any kind of extra cost, so you have a supplement company that, and not certainly not absolving supplement companies. I've seen some people do some fucked up stuff, but it's like, they're essentially playing in a game where other people aren't going to do that. So it's like, what is their incentive outside of trying to do the right thing? It's just, a, it's a weird, it's a, it's unfortunate. So it was kind of one of those things that we talked about and I do talk about it, but man, people don't really put much of a premium on stuff like that, which is unfortunate because exactly what you said, I get like messages. My main thing is um, I just, uh, I talk to so many people, so many customers, like every single day, that's just how I kind of got more perspective on the industry and like who's sort of on the outside kind of looking in and it's crazy what people will take. It's crazy what people will take without thinking about it, especially like now where you have such information at your fingertips. There's really no excuse. You know, I, I, I also will never, I, I always blame the customer too. Like I, I'm like, look, it's not, I was like, it's not like this anymore where he's, call, going, he's calling you, he's calling you out to your levels. <laughs> well, it's like from your 16 year old self <laughs> well you know when we were 16 or whatever this we didn't have this you know what i mean no, you're kind of yeah you're kind of like going out there and you're like you're trusting you know people or whatever so nowadays it's like you kind of know this stuff is going on and um it's, well, back in that time it was if you had a website like that meant you were doing pretty well because back yeah. then websites were hard to build it wasn't yeah. like today where you can just get on wix or you know something like that and just throw yeah. some pictures up there so well, you know, when you have like, a good looking website, it's like, oh, well, these guys have to be legit. You know, you don't yeah. understand. I didn't understand online business back then. I didn't understand that I could just go buy some stuff from China, take some pictures and run some ads on Facebook. So it's yeah. a different world. Uh, well, you but have like, like GNC, like if you look at like thing, places like GNC and stuff now, 
they've changed a lot where it's like you almost you know i i there's gnc's gotten better they picked up better companies better brands and stuff like that at the same time but at least you know they're requiring now amazon's doing the same thing now where they're going to be requiring more test results you have to prove it stuff like that so as much as i don't like some of the brands that vitamin shop and gnc pushes at least they're like at least we know that they're legit you know what i mean and it's like it it gets in this like I hate this whole like concept where sometimes labels are just labels kind of thing, but I've seen so many labels, man. It's like, I look at them and I'm like, I, I fucking know that those ingredients aren't in there. Like, I, I know it. I don't even need to see a test result. I already know it. Cause you have like, you'll have people, they'll be putting like DMAA. You can't use DMAA period. You're not allowed to use it. Right. So you have that in there and then they'll have some kind of like trademarked ingredient or something. And it's like, no, because if you go through the proper channels, you have to sign a licensing agreement with that company. They'll never allow that ingredient to be in there. So I already know that what you're doing is is BS. So it's it's like this weird, I, I will say honestly, to me anyway, it has gotten better, but it, it'll probably never go away, right? It's just, mm-hmm. it's just gonna be part of this. And that it gives the entire industry a bad name for sure. You talked about GNC. So when I went to college and there's so bodybuilding.com was around them, but it was like really bad. So um, nothing else really, no good YouTube channels or anything like that at that point. Like HMB was a big thing when I was in college. You're like, oh, higher protein synthesis, let's get jacked. Um, So we walk, I walked in the store and this is right after a guy got hit for putting Diana ball into his pre-workout and the pre-workout was called craze. Now I only, I happen to run into the article that had it in there. And <laughs> I walk into GNC store three months after this guy's actually like a waiting trial, actually. And he was a waiting trial for another court thing. I think he put um um ephedrine maybe in a product and someone had a heart attack. I don't think he was gonna get prosecuted on it or go to jail for it, but he was a waiting trial. And then he started a new LLC with a new supplement company, and Craze was the product, and mm-hmm. a natural body got builder got hit for a Diana ball, and that's how it came to light. And I read the happened to read the article on it, um, and I was still 100 percent natural at the time, uh, no TRT, or I'm still natural, not so <laughs> natural. So, um, and I walked into GNC like three months after I read the article, and I'm like, you know, this has Diana Ball in it, right? Like D Ball. Like, this is supposed to be pulled from the shelves. And they're like, oh yeah, like I don't know, like we would be told to pull it down. I'm like, that's crazy. I was like, this is lit- that's literally D Ball on the shelf right there. Um, How many did you buy? All of them. <laughs> so i know i didn't buy any of it um but that's jack 3d was probably like three or four years before that and that was dma that, yeah. so i was 17 when i had jack 3d and it was the last soccer game of like actually the playoffs and i took i took a scoop of jack 3d oh god and man i felt like rocking man i was like why didn't i take this before my work mm-hmm. or my games from then on I felt like Superman. I was already breaking some national records for like speed and agility. No joke. I was smoking everyone on the field, like the sense of focus that you got from it. And to be honest, I didn't realize I was ADHD at the time. So it helped me a lot, which is with cognitive mm-hmm. focus. And I didn't get the jitters like a lot of people or the heart rushing or anything like that. But um, DMAA, I feel like is almost better than uh, Adderall, in my opinion. It's I like said that today. I said it today on my story, someone actually asked me, they said, was the original Jack that dangerous? And I said, no. I said, DMAA is not inherently dangerous. I was like, Adderall to me is probably more dangerous, but the caveat, huge caveat being, there's no quality control when it comes to DMAA and stuff like that. So it's like, then you're asking for all kinds of, so it's just, it's one of those things, man, where it's like, we talk about that stuff, but what I also found, unfortunately, is a lot of people that are interested in that stuff don't actually like really care to they, they that's kind of what they're looking for. And that's cool, man. Like, I, I don't care. Do whatever you want to do, man. It's your life. But and that's when we also we put up the paywall for our information. Like, I don't want if you don't care that much, if that's what you want to do, that's cool. I was like, but you're not going to come into like our ecosystem and bring that type of stuff. Like I want people that are really like invested in the whole process. And like I said, I I, I'll help anybody for free. I do free content literally every single day on my Instagram page, but it's like, there's some people that just can't be helped. And that is a hard thing for me to sort of come to grips with is like, you know, you have to know when to just be like, you know what, 
I would, you couldn't have told me this, you know, at one point in my life. So I'll come back to you, you know, like, don't take that kid. You know, you're going to have, I, they're not my kids. You know what I mean? It's like, I can't tell them that. So it's like, come back to me when you want to take this. Can I ask for... a question really fast? Because I think we're kind of all going to be interested in this. What are some uh, supplements that are probably haven't come to light yet that are really interesting and looking promising for you. For instance, uh, Sam and I, we were talking about vitamin, well, uh, we were all talking about vitamin E and luteinizing hormone, and those Uh are Chinese studies, right? But then you also have vitamin B6. I actually started using vitamin B6, by the way, it works phenomenally well. It's actually better than capergoline uh, for prolactin control, Um, things like that. What are some new supplements that maybe we haven't even run into yet that are super interesting and may even mesh into the, I'm not going to say performance enhancing world where we keep this on the natural side, but in in the potentially synergistic in the performance enhancing world, even testosterone replacement world, uh, such as like estrogen control and calcium deglucurate, right? Mm -hmm. Um, I I would love to hear your opinion there because this is your wheelhouse. Yeah, I think that there's going to be some really exciting stuff you're going to see over the next couple of years when it comes to like peptides and things like that because part of the issue has always been that there was um you know if if things are injectable it's all about the availability of it how the body kind of uses it and stuff like that so now it's like all right how can we bring some of those things to market where they work say like orally just as well and stuff like that so there's this whole i would say the most underrated part of what's going on with supplementation is these companies unlocking ways to make the supplements themselves more bioavailable through whatever, through their capsule technologies or through some kind of, um, you know, absorption, you know, guys where it's like, you know, we take some of this stuff and it has like this phenomenal data behind it. And you're like, oh, that's really cool. But, you know, so much of it is destroyed or altered, you know, throughout the GI system. And it's like, and the GI system is so complex anyway, we're kind of like trying to wrap our minds around how this stuff kind of works or where it sort of goes. But, like one of the really like subtle but really cool things that have helped uh, just over like this last year was like the delayed release uh, capsule technology where they actually like one company I know they they microchipped um, capsules and they they make it further through the system before they burst kind of thing. So uh, there was a lot of these things where uh, peptides and stuff like that where they're they're so you know like fragile throughout part of the system if you can protect them throughout there then all of a sudden they become more beneficial. So I think you're going to see between that and there's a lot of like really cool stuff going on for like, you know, we're we're not allowed to like make certain claims, especially when it comes to long-term brain health, like Alzheimer's and dementia and stuff like that. But the one thing I really noticed when I first started really researching like supplements is there was two things that kept popping up. It was the potential for anti-cancer ingredients and anti like Alzheimer's and dementia. And I guess that part of it all goes back to, um, you know, you have the pharmaceutical drugs, the administration of them, but also we're starting to see like some of that kind of come through in the supplement side. If, you know, we're allowed to keep going down this road in the supplement side without, you know, being sort of cut off from some of this technology, I think that there's some really, and maybe that's just me getting older and looking at things differently from just, because that's been the biggest thing, the biggest change in the supplement space is it used to be, supplement companies would only focus on the one or two hours during your workout. And that's why they were getting crushed by Amazon brands and general health brands, because those brands were concentrated on the other 22 hours of the day. So they're, they're finding customers have more benefits for their products because, you know, you think about how many people actually work out out there percentage wise, and then how many of those people actually use a lot of supplements. It's you're narrowing it down so much. So you're starting to see companies um, good ones with good resources and good backing and, and science get into this health-based area. And I think that's one of the, uh, I would say, like silver linings-ish of COVID last year is it made a lot of people wake up to, holy shit, uh, maybe my immune health is really important and all this other stuff kind of going on, you know, not without all that rest of it that went on there. But at least it like got people aware and awareness is where we start to see, because if the customers want it, you have good companies that are willing to do it, but they're not going to do it if nobody is going to spend the money on the product, right? So pretty cool. Here's, stuff. I'm going to say something. I'm going to say something that may be controversial and um, you're yeah. big into the supplements, but <clears throat> I think most pre-workouts are bullshit. Um, not necessarily, not necessarily their ingredients or stuff like that. 
but I've seen like people that watch more plates, more dates. They're like, oh, I got the Gorilla Mind pump and I was doing biceps and I just got this massive, huge pump. And it's definitely from the efficacious doses. And I, I think a lot of that's more mental than anything else. I don't really take pre-workouts. I take yeah. Adderall. Uh, I just take five milligrams of Adderall and go to the gym. And I don't think blowing down lines of Adderall. That's <laughs> no, actually, my Adderall got fucking stolen in Miami. My Adderall got stolen in Miami, so I'm having to use caffeine. But, you know, I don't know. I think a lot of it, you know, people are like, I, I don't know. I think a lot of it's mental. I'm not saying the ingredients don't do that. I'm just saying I've taken a lot of different pre-workouts, and I've worked out similarly, and it's not like I was – just like, holy shit, I can't move my arms. I've got this sick fucking pump. You know, it's the pump comes from working out personally, in my opinion. I don't know. What are your guys' thoughts? I think that like one of the parts of that too is there's a lot of people that, you know, the further you are away from a, a healthy, normal, like lifestyle and stuff like that, sometimes the more you notice those types of products, right? Because like, if you're, if you have people that are, they don't hydrate well. They don't uh, take in enough salt. They don't, you know, do certain things with their diet or whatever. Um, say they're not getting any carbs like around their workout or whatever. And suddenly they take a, a pump product. You can have that acute sort of change in their body and they go, holy shit, you know, this is kind of amazing where it's like, did you need the pre-workout to do that? No, but it got them there. So then it's like, hopefully you can kind of get them. That's when they're putting the supplementation part too much as a, you know, on that pyramid basically. And you try to get them to kind of flip it as they go along. Cause I run into a lot of people that for sure, man, they, they spend thousands and thousands of dollars on pre-workouts and you can tell like they've never made any progress at the gym or anything like that. But it all goes back to, I think the key thing as you said is sometimes, sometimes it's a good enough start where it's like, if you just get people in that mindset where they enjoy going to the gym, is that good enough sometimes, but then hopefully you can, you know, kind of show them a different way as you kind of go along. I'd like to talk about sodium and potassium um, yeah. because I've been using bone broth instead of milk for my protein shakes. I'm just using a whey. So I ran out of milk one day and I was like, well, I don't particularly like water with my whey because it just clumps and it doesn't taste good. And so I took my bone broth and I mixed it with chocolate protein. And it, yeah. the mixing is amazing, first of all. Yeah. And then second of all, the, it's kind of like the one I'm using now, it's low sodium, but it has like 400 milligrams of sodium in it. And so I'll sip on that while I work out. And it's, I'm fat, lately, I've been working out fast for the past two or three months. So I have some pre-workout, some caffeine on top of that. And then I'm taking um, a sips of this high sodium bone broth with my whey chocolate protein and mm -hmm. i'm i can i've noticed the difference like I, when i switched to that i was like oh wow big difference but then i'll come home immediately and have like a bunch of celery with a bunch of potassium in there so I'm, like justin can you, or dave or Pete, can you talk about like how those are interrelated or like some things beneficial ways that we can utilize those things depending on things that somebody might be able to accomplish like you can use the salt as a pre-workout to increase the, um, the volume of liquid in your muscles or whatever. So I can just touch on the sodium piece of it. Um, yeah. The sodium piece is actually, we're just going to keep it relatively simple. You need sodium to shuttle carbohydrates, period. So sodium as a pre-workout, if you have carbs or glycogen in your system, it helps to shuttle it into the muscles when you're activating and tracking them so you can get a better pump. I mean, just, just very high level of what sodium does. It also shuttles water to the area, so you're going to get a better pump because with sodium comes water. And then uh, potassium basically helps the pumps open to actually get the water back out so it can help with the recovery, essentially. That's why, like, Epsom salt baths, it helps to pull out um, basically water out of the body. Water comes out, sodium comes out, you can help recover. It also increases magnesium in the body, which is a muscle relaxant. So th there's, a few, there's a few different chambers that uh, mechanics that you're talking about. Um, but yeah, uh, I'm just going to go back to Pete's question really fast. I mean, for pre-workout, if you're uh, sodium, probably the best thing. You can put sodium in your pre-workout and get a I solid know. pump out of it for sure. For sure. Yeah. Um, well, you sodium want to too. Um, mm -hmm. Oh, sorry. I was going to say too. Sodium. You know, a lot of people use like uh, choline sources and things like that, and trying to increase acetylcholine levels and stuff like that in your body. Mm -hmm. 
sodium plays a huge role in that too, where you need sodium to sort of transport to start that whole entire process anyway. So a lot of people will get, you know, you could take all the choline you want, uh, choline sources, but if you don't have the sodium to kind of get there, and then you notice that sort of uh, cognitive boost too. So and all kinds of salt. Give me more salt for sure. So I feel, <laughs> like, I feel like Dave's telling me to eat like a 20 piece chicken nugget. All the way to the gym. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, are you, guys, are, you guys scared, are you guys scared of sodium? Because that's something that a lot of people are scared of is yeah. sodium. And I'm like, no, I'm not even slightly concerned. No. About it's the other way around. I'm scared of yeah. not having enough. Uh, because what, what, would be, what would be enough? What would be like, hey, if I have three grams per day, that's fantastic. Or, hey, actually, I want six grams. I'm just going to increase my potassium. Yeah, I think honestly, like for me, and uh, this isn't, it's kind of tough to explain to somebody else, but it's almost like, you know, when you're, when you're working out or like, I know, like from my regular diet, when you can almost feel that, right. You can almost feel when you're sort of lacking that. And so it, it's the mm-hmm. wildest thing because you're looking for all these other reasons for it sometimes. And that was kind of my thing. And that was like part of this early part of the process. You were so bombarded with all this crap, like, and how sodium is terrible for you. And it's like, sure. When you're talking about the way they process certain things with, yeah. Okay. But that's not, that's not like the sodium, like what we're talking about, right? It's like we're using it for performance basing. So you have people that are beating themselves in the ground at the gym. And that's been the biggest thing that I've changed as I've learned more about supplementation and all this entire thing was what to do during the workout and then post-workout is has changed everything for me. And a lot of it has to do – bone broth is, is really cool for a lot of reasons because – it's kind of like you have you have collagen, which collagen kind of gets like a little bit of a bad rap from some people. But I think that has more to do with because it's not we're not really sure how much the body uses going back to that whole like topic of conversation where it's like maybe you have to use a ton of it to get a little benefits. But bone broth has collagen is cool because it has like a higher amount of glycine and things like that than sort of whey protein does. So when you combine two of them together, you kind of get this really cool balance of amino acids sort of across the spectrum, glycine being like a really, really uh, mostly beneficial amino acid for the body that's lower in whey protein, whereas like collagen has less branch chain amino acids, it's higher like in glycine. So it's just really cool. So I'm questioning that. So I've, I've done, you know, a, a teaspoon of Himalayan sea salt as pre-workout before multiple times. Yet when I switched to bone broth and whey, without even thinking about the sodium i thought about it afterwards i was like i, I felt different uh, i almost had like a do you know when you get the uncomfortable like fluid retention in your arms sometimes not in a, like not in like a, a edema, not like an like, edema kind, yeah. not, not, not like yeah. that when you're in the gym and you get that swelling so your, your skin is just incredibly tight yes you have a pump but it's it's i could feel it in my hands where previously when I just did Himalayan, like with maybe a pre-workout or something, I did not notice that. But as I've done it with the uh, the whey and the bone broth, I know that I, I'll notice it in my forearms and it, they feel very full. What would be the yeah, reason? I think actually, because we were talking about Ben earlier and Ben's collagen product, I think he uses bone broth in there as well. Hmm. Because there's some there's some like little bit different benefits. I would I would definitely like to see like what product you're talking about too. Because there's bone broth has become like a really um, it's starting to gain a lot of traction. You know, there's the collagen craze, which like everything else, it seems like in supplements, there's a lot of times mm-hmm. where you take a, a ingredient that has some benefits and then we turn it into the miracle pill and then we fuck that all up and then you know people like glutamine would be like another one. It's like People are like, oh, you just take some glutamine now and your whole entire body will recover and all this sort of stuff. And it's like, well, if you use it the way it's intended and what we look at. So collagen's kind of like gone off the rails a little bit. But bone broth is one that I think we're – it's very expensive though, too, I think, from what I've seen. It, it, so I would get the organic one and it's low sodium, but it's still 400 milligrams per serving, which to me seems like – a so if I'm drinking two cups of that, there's 800 milligrams – uh, of sodium, a little bit less than 800 milligrams of sodium, but it's like three bucks, give or take, probably a little bit less than three bucks for four cups. So if you figure if somebody is listening to this, they get like a protein shake that is two ninety nine. Oh yeah, is, sure. you get you get four cups of mm-hmm. 
bone broth that is a thousand fucking times better for you. And you can get organic and it's only three bucks. And, and I just get mine, the organic one at Walmart and it's uh, low sodium or whatever. So we've, yeah. got, we've got about 10 minutes left. Um, and I wanted to cover, um, Justin, I mean, you obviously know a lot about stuff about supplements. I wanted to get two top threes from you. I wanted to get a top three supplement. No, 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 no. Not, not for like person of saying the top three supplements that like a normal person who's just, who just happened to stumble across this podcast should look into. And then kind of the top three where people kind of like myself, like I know a certain amount of stuff, but I'm not like real heavy into vitamins and supplements as someone like yourself. Yeah, it's actually, it's so much simpler um, than a lot of people make it out to be. Right. I think, um, you know, people, I get constant questions about, you know, muscle builders and all that sort of stuff, but people don't take creatine is one of them. Creatine is one that I just, I, the more that we learn about it, the more I think everyone should be considering taking it. Uh, it doesn't matter your age, gender, whatever. I think people should be taking it. There's just, there's no risk with it that, that all those things have been debunked by at this point. And there's, there's, we know about the performance benefits. We know that you're going to have some benefits there. But what, again, it kind of goes back to what I was saying earlier. There is potential long-term cognitive health benefits from creatine that um, there, we, like I said, we, we're not there yet, not the way we are with the performance side of it, but it's there, man. And it's going to come out uh, the further we go along. I think when it comes to overall, like protecting all the, you know, we have, everything goes back to inflammation and enzymatic breakdown and all that sort of stuff. And creatine for the, for the price, although the price is like quadrupled this year, it's still, you know, like I think on the top tier of where you would want to be, but then also you have, it's just like B vitamins, man. And like um, things like magnesium, like exactly what you're talking about. You know, we, people go for these very expensive, you know, health products and not that there's not benefits there, but, uh, all the processes in your body, you can find a B vitamin attached to it somewhere. B6 is exactly what you said earlier, is a huge one. And you see all this, these links between magnesium, like what you were talking about earlier, Dave. So people need to have those um, things in order, the B vitamins, the creatines, magnesium, stuff like that. That, it sounds boring answer, but people don't have that taken care of. And then once you do that, then, because if you're tacking on a lot of these supplements without that, you're that's where you start to get the, okay, where you just have expensive urine, basically, kind of thing. Well, you know, what's what's interesting is a lot of stuff that we're supplementing, we're supplementing because the diet that we eat is garbage these days. Yeah. You know, I mean, back in the day, like, you had eggs, you had meat, you had fruits, you know, you had vegetables. That was kind of mm -hmm. it, you know, and all that stuff. If you look up any fruit or vegetable, you're going to see that it has tons of health benefits, you know, we're getting a little more as advanced as society and broken down different compounds. But yeah. I think at the end of the day, if you have a good diet and then you supplement with some other stuff like creatine, vitamin D, vitamin C, and vitamin a multivitamin, D is the I think that's one. a solid foundation right there. Yeah. Vitamin D is 100%. That's actually, I don't know why I didn't say that one first, because vitamin D, that seems to be the one also. I don't know if you guys have this experience too. You have a lot of clients in their blood work and stuff like that. It's like we can't get enough of it. It seems like, to be honest with you, and the more we're, you know, lifestyle factors and the more we're inside and stuff like that, I think that that's, I, I say this a lot, but I'm like, this is the epidemic that we don't talk about is people don't have vitamin enough vitamin D. And Justin, you mentioned that, sorry, Dave, uh, Justin, you mentioned earlier how, depending on which angle you're looking at it from the problem, right, is how it's perceiving it, right? If you're looking at it from Parkinson's or Alzheimer's or some other disease-oriented POV versus somebody who doesn't feel super great or their immune system yeah. isn't super great or they want to build muscle or like one thing or another. There's even, I just was looking at an article today of a new study on the mood enhancing effects of vitamin D. Uh, mm -hmm. Vitamin D is like, and it's also works as like an antioxidant curve to some degree or another. And there's a whole theory behind disease that disease of all forms stems from inflammation of one form or of another. So if you, even like cancers and all these other things, whether it's a micro uh, type of inflammation, inflammation is so incredibly powerful that 
it brings things that needs to be brought to a place to fix it in our body, but left chronically. So if it's an acute thing, like all oh, that's super beneficial, but o- over time as it's a chronic thing, then it creates tumors or it creates other diseases, or it's even been implicated in like mental things like Alzheimer's or yeah. um, Parkinson's or other things like that. It's tremendously important. So yeah. I want to touch on two things. You mentioned vitamin D, vitamin D and blood work. The correlation you're going to see is a high stress person with low vitamin D and why? Because it ruins the uptake of vitamin D. So if you're supplementing vitamin D, your vitamin D is going to always remain low. So you're going to look at your adrenals when your vitamin D is low. Mm -hmm. Um, Then another thing that you just brought up, uh, you just mentioned something and it was around Alzheimer's. Alzheimer's, the link is, is that they need to start calling it diabetes type three because Mm -hmm. they've linked the blood glucose, the extra blood glucose going in the stream. That's why insulin, anything that can increase the basically insulin sensitivity of the body and increasing that over time is longevity related. And because it protects the brain over time, all organs actually in the body, that's why gangrene and stuff like that, you lose limbs, um, is literally glucose and it clogs basically the organs um, and at a cellular level and it kills things off. And next thing you know, you can't remember your name. Yeah, that's no, so I'm saying, man. Yeah. So, so interesting. What's the most, real quick, because we only have a couple minutes left. Everybody, what's the most interesting thing, whether supplement or PED related, that you're kind of like, oh, this is super interesting, or, or you're currently looking at? Uh, Justin, you want to start? Uh, there is some things, uh, because one area I think that has always been really interesting, but we've never been able to like really quantify it, is the longevity space. And here you have like the NAD supplements and stuff like that. But I've always like made this joke. I said, how are you going to sell me on an NAD supplement? I was like, am I going to start taking it now? And then am I going to be on my deathbed, you know, hopefully 60 years from now and go, wow, that thing bought me another, you know, like year or two. But we'll like receive- a 40 year guarantee. <laughs> right, right, 40 right. years of your money my back. Money, my money back. You're going to pay back my, <laughs> you know, my grandkids. So it's like, but what we're uh, seeing in the space, we're seeing some pretty cool people get with some real resources and they're actually giving us some data that you can sort of uh, look at in the short term that you can then go, that would lead to probably an increased quality of life kind of thing. There's some, some pretty cool stuff we've been tinkering around with, but again, it's like, you know, it, it, it's a newer kind of thing. It's not that NAD and those types of supplements aren't, aren't, you know, they've been around a while, but we've never really seen people that I think really like have the resources or the interest to really help you know it's a, it's a hot button thing like oh sell somebody a longevity pill if you go after the upper middle class crowd that what do they want they want more time on this world right and they'll spend two hundred dollars three hundred dollars a month on it they don't care so it's always been there the market has always been there but we've never really been able to like spread that information out to more people where they can like look at something tangible so you're actually going to see that uh coming here pretty soon which is really cool dave Yeah, so I've been looking up uh, anabolics that are non-androgenic. So to opening up uh, anabolic basically pathways, utilizing basically things like insulin sensitivity and stuff like that in the conjunction of it, I'm actually going to be running a blood experiment on my wife because it's non-androgenic and myself because I'm only on TRT and haven't touched an androgenic drug in over a year now. Um, So I've been doing a lot of research and going to create a concoction and it's based off of lab work and hard proof and what is actually going to occur and we're going to be tracking our body composition over time um i'll allude to one thing as one might be dhea which is androgenic but seven keto dhea which is not tied to androgenic so um there's going to be a entire series around it but it's going to be expensive all the blood work uh so that's (laughs) kind of what i'm doving into right now we'll We'll cover that in another episode uh test your levels what about you Nothing really. <laughs> <Be honest. laughs> uh, it, I'm just taking tests and going to the gym. Yeah, there's not. I mean, to be honest, like up until I would say over like the last year, I've been pretty bored uh, with what's going on. There really hasn't been much. There's been a few companies that have gotten into this space with, um, they've tested out some things, they had good feedback, and now they're ready to push it to like more levels. So, and it's, it's people that I know as well. And it's like, there's been a good relationship with there where I'm like, people should pay attention to this stuff. And then there's good feedback. So then if the consumers are ready for it, if people out there are ready for it, then there's a lot of people in the space that can do some pretty cool stuff, but there's just, 
they're not going to try to reinvent the wheel, you know, if nobody wants it. So, all right, sure. guys, we're cut, I'm cutting close on time. Uh, Justin, check out him on Instagram, uh, Supplement Snoop. Check out his app. Uh, check out Sam's. Check out Dave. Thank you guys for being here, and we'll see you next time.